exciting it is for me personally in our school district to have been able to persuade this man, this champion, Doug Kuman, to come and accept being a part of our family at San Angelo ISD as the new uh, athletic coordinator and head football coach at Lakeview High School. And you're here today for us to t help our um, viewers to know a little bit more about you uh, the the newspaper and television has told a lot about you but Doug your uh, demeanor and who you are as a man sometimes all of that can't come through in just sound bites over newspapers and TV and so I want our audience to get to know you like we got to know you when we were interviewing you and saw that you were the one we needed and wanted at Lakeview and we're so blessed to have you here. Well I appreciate the introduction. I'm gonna hang around you more often. I already <laughs> feel better right now. <laughs> well there are many non-negotiables that our team um, stuck to and we had some great can great candidates and that always makes a person in my position incredibly grateful that we have choices but you rose to the top for a lot of reasons and our audience if they've read or heard knows some of the reasons that you um, were the without a doubt our leading candidate and then thank you Lord you accepted <laughs> <laughs> to come because uh, getting a fit for any leadership position with the organization is very critical. I'm not necessarily a fit for every school district. Cool. So I think uh, there were some other of our great candidates who were outstanding, but you uh, brought the pieces that we felt would help us uh, build on what's already taking place in Lakeview. And we talked a few minutes ago about building a culture. It isn't just teaching kids the X's and O's of your plan but it's building a belief system that if they work hard and are passionate and do the things you ask and are doing what they're supposed to do in the classroom and outside of school, that they have a shot at being a champion. And that's one of the things. Talk about how you make believers out of kids, Doug. That's one of the biggest challenges of both of our jobs. Correct. I think uh, in any situation, I, I really believe that the athletes, they, they want to perform and they mm -hmm. want to excel. So uh, you already have that uh, position with the, with the student athletes. And uh, I think it, it, just like you said, change in a culture takes time. And it, it's the belief of the people within the athletic programs and the student body that is going to make a difference over time. So uh, those changes have come by slowly, and uh, but surely, and I think it's going to be important uh, just the hiring of the coaches or maintaining the coaches at, at Lakeview High School and uh, working with them in a positive direction and continuing to, to allow students to have success by allowing the coaches to coach. Uh, you know, I think you've got to give them a framework to work within uh, the coaches. I don't want to micromanage in, in any regard. And they got to have their opportunity to do well also. And so we'll, we'll provide that from a leadership standpoint, but also allow those coaches to coach. And, and I've been there now, this is probably my 10th day on the job. And have had a chance to evaluate the coach. And I'm very, very appreciative of what they're doing at this time. Uh, the coaching staff that's in place, uh, they're doing a great job of still selling the fact that we can, that, that it is possible, uh, that we're going to uh, improve and continue to get better as time goes along. So I, I appreciate them at this point. And again, those evaluations still take place over time. But what I've seen in the short period of time, I'm very happy with what they're doing. Uh, changing all that, the, the culture and the mindset will take a little bit of time, but I think you've got to be positive and, and understand that it can be done. And uh, 
and that's going to be our, our biggest point. I, I think before I can answer that question fully, I've got to go back to when I was in high school. It, it meant so much to me uh, to be a part of athletics and to be around not only the coaches, but the educators at Fredericksburg High School. They treated me uh, in a way that I always felt good about myself, that I was ready to come to school, that I wanted to excel. So I think that kind of rubbed off on me as I was getting up, going through high school. And, and again, going to college, I went to Angelo State University, uh, were with great people in the education department, uh, athletics, and again, the, the, the positive impact they made on my life. And I saw that and so I was fortunate enough to be around those type of people, and I think that have, that has bled through me into where I am today. So uh, the 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 past that I went through, I realized what a difference a person can make in a, in a student's life. So uh, all that accumulates into providing for the best programs that we can be successful in the future. Tell, tell us what you're doing. What is a person coming in on the now? not even quite, uh, well, two full weeks of days, school business days. Right. What do you do uh, as quickly as possible to try to let your staff and students know about Doug Kuhlman? I think establishing a rapport with them and and being there and letting them know that I'm going to be there for them and we're going to work together um, as, a, as a team and working in a positive direction. And uh, again, I've got to be there with the students, with the coaches, and get to know them and uh, uh, evaluate them and let them know that I am gonna be supportive for them and the direction we're gonna go. We've already had meetings with the coaches, how we want to uh, deal with student situations and uh, be in, in a positive direction and, and working with those different situations that may come up. So we've talked about that in general. Again, it's still early to try to get Without a, doubt. A, a lot of things <clears throat> taken care of. But uh, at this point, I'm, I'm pleased in the short period of time that we've had a chance to work toward that. My experience <clears throat> with kids, young people of all ages, they usually give a, a newcomer a chance. And adults can be magnets and what are you trying early on to show, what would you hope they see in you as soon as possible? Well, I hope that they, uh, we talked about this as with the team situation. Uh, I, the thing that we've got to create is belief and trust in each other, and then we'll work mm -hmm. toward our team. And uh, that was from day one, I talked to them that, you know, we're gonna believe in each other and we've got to trust in each other. And that's not something that we can just say the first day and it happens, that's gonna happen over time. So uh, if we have that belief, if we have that trust and they can see that the coaches, that myself, we're gonna be there working hard, trying to gain that success each day uh, and not, each and every day I told them we're going to utilize that athletic period, use all the minutes that we can to, to get ready for, for the following year because it's going to be important. So that that belief and trust and, and showing that we care about those athletes over time, that's going to, that's going to develop. But again, it's still early and uh, I, I know they're, they're feeling me out and oh, feeling yeah. the coaches staff out. But uh, And watching uh, your um, interactions, kids are very observant. And Definitely. even if they're not acting like it, they're observing. You um, portray c constantly a very positive facial affect. Um, you're a good listener. It was one of the positive things we heard about you over and over through your references. Um, kids need to be listened to. So I, I'm hearing that that's coming across. So you're doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I think that's important. I mean, I, even when I talk to the athletes in a group, we ask them to maintain eye contact and work on those uh, things that will help them later on in life too. They'll listen better if they're eye contact. I tell them that, hey, if you come and visit with me, uh, I'm gonna listen to you, I'm gonna look you in the eye and I, I wanna talk to you. So hopefully we're, we're doing little small things that will help them later on in life too with the athletes, but that if we expect it from them, then we should in return and, and earn that respect from them also. 
A part of being a coordinator has some of the same responsibilities my job is. It's not just working with kids, it's also being the role model and mentor to uh, a number of coaches, not only at Lakeview but at Lincoln. So um, your young people are not, you've got to divide, somewhat divide your time between making sure um, the golf team, uh, the kids and the coaches are being uh, supported and um, you have a history of that. You, um, in your former school districts, you clearly have supported all sports doing well. Um, how do you make time to consciously do that as a coordinator? Uh, I think, first of all, just the importance of what you said, that all programs have a chance. And, and uh, you know, I had two daughters and when they were growing up, and it was very important to them, the, the athletics, the extracurricular activities that they were involved in uh, meant a lot to them. And I want them to have success and, and everything that the highest success possible that they could have. So uh, as a parent, I even realized how important it was to all the programs. But also when I, going back to growing up in Fredericksburg, Texas, I was allowed to do different sports and how all those sports were important to me. So uh, as a person, I know how how great of a feeling that can be when, when you're supported in all those sports. So just that and my carryover as far as a person realizing that it's important to those students and to the coaches that are involved with those programs. Uh, again, uh, getting a chance to meet with those coaches, letting them know, uh, you know, our expectations and, and, and the realistic expectations, nothing that we can't accomplish early on and uh, allowing them to talk to me and telling me some of the things that has happened in the past that maybe we can improve on at Lakeview that uh, they felt like they, uh, the coaches couldn't uh, change uh, in the past. And, and that's not any direct hit toward anybody, it just, their their ability to visit with me hopefully and talk to me and I am approachable I want to and allow them now we can't change everything you know we Certainly. have to have some guidelines and rules and uh, work within those but uh, and priorities right. just like in a family we can't buy it all we have to prioritize what's important first especially with the economy uh, the way it is right. but uh, Doug we're committed uh, Coach Slaughter our school board. Um, the leadership in your community, we are committed to, to the greatest extent possible doing what it takes, providing for you the necessities in this uh, time for what it takes for you to be successful and for all of your staff uh, to be successful in each of their supports. You. Um, have a number of years of experience and you've taken your, you've led uh, your teams to a high level of success. Once you taste that, it really becomes addictive, doesn't it? No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> you just want it so badly and want kids. Why is helping a program be a champion um, such an important thing for a kid to experience? Oh, uh, you know, as, as far as being successful in any program, uh, say they start within one program and they see that the success, and just like you said, once you've had that, and not only with adults, but with the students too, their desire to have that in uh, more and more often, and not only in, in one th area that they may work in, well now they're going to want to do that in the other areas also. So that success is not only um, a great thing for the program they're within, but then they start bleeding over into the other programs and, and the kids realize that if they're uh, doing the rules correctly, uh, abiding by the coaches' rules and, and and improving each and every day, all of a sudden, hey, we're seeing these these successful things that are happening for us. So uh, they get better in those other programs also. So uh, hopefully, uh, an example, our soccer team, we, oh. the boys' soccer team had a great year, and uh, they, they 
kept going into the playoffs and, and those athletes that were part of that program, you know that they're just wanting more and more. And so if they're athletes in other programs, if they're maybe in other extracurricular events, they they feel that that sense of, of desire to excel and it will flood into those other programs. It is contagious, not only in that, as you just alluded to that child, it bleeds over into them trying harder in their academics. Uh, it bleeds over, hopefully, and usually does, into their home, into their personal lives. Um, watching that fine group of young men the other night come to the board meeting with their wonderful young coach, uh, they, they walk and talk with confidence. And uh, that's part of, a big part of our jobs, to give them experiences that they can develop that so they can weather their lives down the road. Correct. Yeah, and we can't separate that out. I hope, at least I'm drawn toward principal leaders, whether it's a principal or a head coach, who realizes that, that it's, that's why we're doing all this. Right. Right. I mean, no doubt we all want to win for ourselves and we want to have it's high so success. Fun. Right. But again, what we're getting across to our students, what type of education are we still providing for the students through the athletic program, uh, how they can be successful in life, uh, what they can do to help themselves out uh, as far as their demeanor, how, how they uh, treat other people, how being being leaders, being followers, uh, work, uh, being a sp with their sportsmanship, uh, just different things of that nature that coaching and athletics can provide for them. And then also, you know, having success, yeah, that's great, but we still want to provide that for the students, those uh, intangibles that come along with uh, having a successful season. I learned, because I was not an athlete, and but I was a part of other groups, uh, fine arts groups, uh, orchestras, et cetera, choirs. And I was so interested with our second child. You mentioned your daughters. Um, he was in a small school, um, and part of his sports uh, w truly went deep. And then uh, some of his teams he played on uh, never reached a championship level. And in years later, after he was in college, and I was trying to glean from him um, what were the lessons learned from his championship experiences. His basketball team and track were champions, but his football program never quite excelled the years he was on the team. And you know, we just alluded to the fact that it's so much fun to win. Uh, everybody wants to be a part of it when it's going well. But he had, had gained the maturity, finally, to realize in retrospect that his greatest lessons were learned when he wasn't winning. And I, I, I know you've been through a lot of championship years when you were in college. Your, your team, as you as the leader, as the quarterback of the team, won the national championship. Doesn't get any better than that. Right. And then you, a part of your professional career, have been a part of years that it was tough going. Correct. What have you gleaned from both of those that you want to bring this first year, we're closing out a year, but really a lot of what you're building is going to go on right now in spring training and in summer program to get you ready for the fall. What about your struggling years and your national championship years do you bring to Lakeview High School? Well, I think, uh, and, and there are, there are, you're going to have times in life where there's struggles, there's going to be adversity, and it's going to happen even within a football season. I don't even care if it's a good football season, if it's a great football season, there are going to be adversities along the way. And uh, so I've been through both of those as well as most adults have of some sort. Uh, but, you know, knowing that 
how to handle those situations with the athletes, getting with them when, when things are maybe getting difficult and we feel like we're not going in a, in a strong direction, the direction that we'd like to go, well, we may have to, you know, maybe instead of going outside every day and, and trying to hit the X's and O's of football and whatever sport it might be, well, let's slow down, let's visit with the kids, let's get them in here and, and talk about adversity and explain the, the facts of, okay, how are we gonna get through this? How are we gonna get over it? And uh, explain that situation to the athletes. Uh, likewise, uh, going's good, it's always a lot easier mm -hmm. to, to continue with, with the direction that you're going. So uh, uh, both of those, have uh, been an asset and I've, I've educated myself throughout life having to deal with those top two situations. But uh, I think that type, having gone through those, I think that I can help those situations. And, and even with coaches going through uh, periods of time when it's, it's difficult that we, we can work through this and we can still improve it. And that's what we've got to do. Okay, where are we? And what should we do next to improve that situation? And don't you think, Doug, that the times in our lives, which is what this is preparation for, when the bottom crashes out, whether it's through illness or personal relationships or jobs, um, finding uh, lessons drawn for where do we go, how do we, um, how do we get out of this? And um, what I've heard about you is that you, um, whether it's through your stories or just your personal relationships with your kids, they are you get you have within yourself what other kids and adults can draw from that well of uh, confidence and lessons, and that's what uh, one of the many things that attracted us to you. You're not a quitter, uh, and yet you on the other end of the spectrum, you also know how to um, pull together champion programs. Well, I think uh, being honest and sincere with the athletes, and again, uh, I may have alluded to it earlier, the fact that you know we, we're, we're gonna have expectations that we can uh, realistically achieve this this first year and- uh, And it, celebrate. It's gonna, oh, no doubt. What I mean, do you celebrate there's more to celebrate than just the win. Right. Uh, I talked to the kids just yesterday. We had a great practice and, and how we're going to help ourselves in the future, you know, not, uh, and yes, as a team, uh, to working toward uh, getting our football team better, but also uh, as, as a program that we're going to help each other out and, and work together and just just there's going to be little things that happen along the way that you can always show improvement and and head it into a a direction that we want to go and then there's times when maybe we didn't have the perfect day or, or it wasn't exactly what we did well i let them know that too i gather them and tell them that you know we didn't have the we didn't have the practice that we should have had today but uh we're going to get that fixed as a coach staff we'll talk about it. we'll get with back with athletes and we're going to improve so uh there are daily small things that we can do and be honest with the kids sincere and improve each and every day and I think uh, that's going to make positive results in the, f in the future. You mentioned that sometimes the practice doesn't go well. And s but even in a overall not so successful practice, I, I think there's usually some little spot that we can grab on and cling to that it all wasn't uh, not worth showing up today. Right, right. <laughs> These are some things we did, some little things we did right. Correct. Oh, there's no doubt, even even in a situation where it's not not the ideal it looks practice. Bleak. Yeah, you're sitting there thinking, <laughs> oh, we, we're better than this. Uh, and sometimes in the coaching side of it, you know, it, it's hot out there. It's difficult to get out there day in and day out and work at a high level. So every once in a while, the coaches got to get a little excitement going and, and get their blood boiling and let the athletes mm -hmm. know that, hey, it's time to improve and, and, and just Maybe it might be something just half of the practice on, okay, we did improve. We, we saw that fire, that spark after the coaches talked to you and we improved. So yes, there's always something that you can build upon uh, to make it a, a, a good thing for the future. Not always just say that, okay, this, this 
this practice, the whole thing was lost at no regard. Or again, There's always something that yes, can be. Yes, I agree. Get, you can improve from. Well, you're an humble man, I understand, and uh, you give other people uh, credit, and that's not often seen from someone that's been as successful uh, as you are, and we appreciate that in you. Um, I think it's important for our, our uh, audience to know the levels. You've gone uh, to the quarterfinals, regional finals four times, area finals four times by district finals. Um, that's a track record. I, I read a few years ago that when a, several of pro teams were looking for head coaches that one of the things in common from these uh, owners that they were looking for somebody that had done it and so knew how to do it. You've done it. So it's, we're re relying on you to bring that wealth of uh, 19 years as a head coach. Um, that's a, a lot of experience and uh, dealing with people, dealing with uh, challenges, and whatever hand of cards you're dealt, uh, we're relying on you to bring all of that to help these kids uh, feel confident that they have a leader and our coaches feel confident because you already have a track record of supporting all sports. Correct. Wow, we're excited. I. Uh, uh, know the people on the Lakeview that are such great Lakeview supporters are excited. People all over town want you to be successful. Uh, do you feel it? Oh yes, I, <laughs> I appreciate the Lakeview community, you know, and I appreciate the administration going back to earlier uh, what you had just talked about. Nothing ever in my life has Doug Coleman done on his own. It's been a collective uh, working environment with everyone. Uh, just like into the, coming into this job, I knew from the administrative standpoint, when y'all visited with me during the interview process, I knew that uh, y'all wanted the right things for Lakeview and the Lakeview community. I, I had heard about the coaching situation that were out there and the people that were hungry for uh, a chance of, of success for their program. So uh, just hearing all that, I knew it was the right thing, the right situation mm -hmm. to come into. And uh, again, the when when our successes happen in the future, it's not going to be because of Doug Coleman. It's going to be because of Lakeview High School's community, the support of the SAISD, and uh, the, the whole program, the whole school district. So it, again, it's not one person. It's a team effort in everything you do. And, and I enjoy team uh, teamwork. I think mm -hmm. it's great. There's no better feeling than uh, seeing a group of young men, young ladies come together in a in a atmosphere that uh, you know it, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of work, individual preparation, teamwork, and uh, it, I just I get excited when I see good things happen and. Um, and success is not always win and loss. I mean, you can play really, really well, and you may have another team that plays really, really well. And in a playoff situation, uh, you know, you may have two teams. Uh, I go back to the uh, TCU game this past year that they played in the Rose Bowl, and both teams were very well, very well played. And and uh, I was glad Texas team TCU came out on top of the I Rose was Bowl. Too. But both teams played so well, and and there weren't any flamboyant one person mm -hmm. t dominating over the rest, and it was just an enjoyable game to watch. So uh, I would hope that we as coaching staff and as community transpire that along our kids that yes we're going to be successful but we're doing it together as a team and not one mm. person gets all the accolades and, and we work in a, as a team and it's just enjoyable to me to, to be a part of that type of program. You are uh, a have been offensive coordinator, so you're an offensive-minded coach. Do you consider yourself that? Well, yes, I'd, I'd put myself on the offensive <laughs> side of the ball more than defense, no doubt. <laughs> well, can we, are we gonna, are you, is it too soon for you to know? Or are you gonna have more of a passing game or a running game or? Uh, you know, I really believe uh, my 
my belief is that we're going to attack people and we're going to do it with the, the rushing attack first and then we're going to create passes off of that, uh, some play action passes that, that we'll be successful with. And also with the f fact that Lakeview has been in uh, a spread team, we do spread and we do our two minute offense and our a lot of people call it the NASCAR offense, go quicker. So we do have that. but. First of all, we're going to start with, with the rushing attack and, and being out there, I realize that we do have to learn the fundamentals of alignment coming out of our stance and going attack and on the, and a lot of fundamental skills that we have to work on. But we're going to establish that first and then off of that, the, the rush, basic rushing attack, then we're going to have our passes that, that, that come off of those those plays and we've been real effective with it in the past and I feel strong we're going to be effective with it uh, at Lakeview and um, so that's that's my plan at this time and, and I think we have the personnel I know we have the personnel to do that with our with our young men. Are you going to have spring uh training? Or you yes we are. Uh, that was one of the first things when I came in you know coming in in April is is a difficult time because you're you're limited on the number of time that uh, amount of time that you're going to be with the athletes and athletic program. But I felt like after uh, being with the athletes and watching what we've done, that that spring training will be a benefit for us this year. And yes, we are. We're gonna next week, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, uh, we're going to do some shorts and t-shirt and helmet type situation. And then when we come back after the tax in May. The first three weeks in May, Monday through Friday, we're going to have spring training. So maybe have a little spring game? Yes, uh, I'm always careful about spring games. Uh, we want to have a, a, some fun with them and have a spring game and let them have some contact and playing time. But again, you want to be careful and, and limit it to, so that you don't just wear everybody out and, and injuries become a factor. So I want to stay away from that. Uh, but it's still at the same time we want to we want to get be beneficial from our spring training. So yes, we'll have a, a spring game, but it won't be a full yeah. football type game. It's going to be a situation offense, defense, and kicking game where it, it's not going to look like a football game. But we're going to learn from it and learn from our athletes. Well, we're there for you. Well, thank you. We can hardly wait for you and your family to get here full time. Well, you're here now. Correct. But for your wife to end her school year down in industrial and get here. And Doug, thank you for choosing us because we sure chose you. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm, I'm very grateful. <laughs>